Simon. Thank you, Simon. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what you do. I work for a company called Inplex Legal Compliance Solutions and what we do is we take a proactive approach to legal compliance. So we help companies to comply with the safety, health, environmental, labor laws before they get into trouble. Okay. Yeah. And today you're going to be chatting a bit about environmental issues. We're going to be looking at environmental liability. In the past four to five years we've seen a lot of movement when it comes to enforcement of compliance with the environmental laws and we're going to look at what it means for companies big and small um, if they don't comply and what the potential consequences are. So are we going to see the Aaron Brockovich type of class actions in South Africa do you think? Well if you look at the blue platinum case um, the South African legislation makes provision that you can have um, private prosecutions and in blue platinum case it was actually the community that drove the whole case. So it's not any interested party really. Interested and affected parties can actually, they first have to give an opportunity to the state to take action, but if there's no action, then our communities can actually, and we're seeing more and more community involvement because they're affected by the non compliance. Most of the case law at the moment focuses on the mining industry, but we're seeing a move. That seems towards, to be the more obvious target. But we're seeing a move. For a long time they were excluded because the environmental laws weren't applicable to them. They had a separate piece of legislation, but we're seeing integration with one environmental management system and different government departments working together. So although the focus today seems to be on mining industry, this applies to all industries across the board. So non-mining, there's one case with the um, agricultural sector, but the most of the case law at the moment is not. I mean, we obviously, we, we see a lot of service stations asking us for pollution type cover. So that's your SME type of sector. They're known to pollute the environment from time to time when the tanks get to a certain age. Do you think that that type of client can start seeing some of the sectors? Well, we're seeing, you see specific non-compliances, but in the environmental law, there's a general duty of care. And we're going to look at that specifically today. Because people seem to think that the non-compliances are just if you don't do an environmental authorization. But some of the, the, the penalties that were awarded were in fact for your general duty of care not to pollute. So it could apply. The, the thing is the environmental, the government department is actually quite fair. It's one of the only departments where you see where you see an, a warning of a warning. Okay. So they give you a reasonable time to take They'd action. They'd rather have you correct it yes. than just come down. Proactive so as opposed to the teachers. Yes. But the moment that they decide to prosecute then it's full, full speed ahead. There's a lot of time to fix your, the law even makes provision for you, to fix your non-compliance. But if you don't, if you don't action that, and if you don't stop the pollution, then there's going to be consequences. And, and as we saw in Blue Platinum, yes. direct has been personally accountable. That, that Blue Platinum is a landmark case yes. because um, the director was personally held liable, but not just that. Usually you get a fine or imprisonment, so there's an option. In Blue Platinum, there wasn't a, a fine option. It was imprisonment, although suspended. It's not a criminal offence with a, with a prison sentence that's been suspended. So that is a landmark case. It's the first time we've seen something like that in South Africa. Lucinda, thank you for your time. My I'd pleasure. Like to see your presentation. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.